Hi, Father Paul here at the Sunday Mass, and I want to thank you for tuning in today to celebrate and to pray with us. But before we begin our celebration, I just want to touch on a little issue or problem that we've been having. Perhaps in recent weeks and months, as you joined us on YouTube or on our website, uh, you've seen little ads pop up during the Mass. First of all, I want to personally apologize for this disruption and let you know that this is not of our doing. We don't monetize our channel, so we receive nothing for those ads. But it seems YouTube, in their policies, still continue uh, to put ads periodically on the content that we produce. We are working very hard to solve this problem, and hopefully at some point in the near future, at least on our website, you'll be able to watch the Mass ad-free. If you do watch us on the YouTube channel and have not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and become part of the Sunday Mass faith community on YouTube. Again, thank you for your time. Let us begin our celebration. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass today, a ministry of the Passionist community. It is June 20th, the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and it's also Father's Day, so I want to send a, a, a shout out to all the fathers and grandfathers who are with us today and those they have gathered with to help us celebrate this gift of Sunday. So if you have your prayer guide, take it out, turn to page 61, and let us begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And as we come together today to celebrate the gift of Sunday, to honor fathers everywhere, but more importantly, to encounter God in this sacramental and special way. Let us first pause as we always do and seek God's forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to the gift of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Will. We praise you, we bless you, we, we adore you, you we, we glorify you, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of the, Son of the Father, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive 
of your guidance, those set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling bands, when I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all, therefore all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who, might, who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you O lord on that day as evening drew on jesus said to his disciples let us cross over to the other side leaving the crowd they took jesus with them in a boat just as he was and the other boats were with him a violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet! Be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the winds and the seas obey? The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The famous author and Trappist monk Thomas Merton once wrote, you do not need to know precisely what is happening or exactly where it is all going. What you need is to recognize the possibilities and the challenges offered by the present moment and embrace them with courage, faith, and hope. I thought of that in terms of our readings today. You know, our first reading we have from the book of Joel, and many, many weeks ago, as ordinary time in the new year began, you might remember a homily I gave that was sort of based on a a, a first reading of Job. And at that particular point in time, Job was giving God the business. He was frustrated, he was angry, he was upset, he wanted to know what was going on. Well, today we have another first reading from Job, and it's towards the end of the book of Job. And it begins God's response to Job. Uh, And we might say God is about to give Job a what for. And God uses a very important image for people of, of Job's time and in many ways all of Israelite history. The sea was a very, very terrifying place. Uh, The Israelites were not people of the sea. They were people of the land. They tried a couple of times to put navies together with very little success. And the sea always scared them, whether it was the great Mediterranean or the Sea of Galilee or any other sea around them. And God sort of says to Job today, you know, I got power. I can control the sea. Jesus, in our gospel, sort of visualizes for us that power of God, that that control, that presence in our life. And and so I think Thomas Merton was right. We don't... We may not understand God, God's mystery. We we say that over and over again. And even when we have stories like our gospel today, you know, to to understand the the, the divinity side of Jesus in, in his journey of faith, in his journey to Calvary, we don't always understand why he does what he does. We can't comprehend it. Mystery, miracles, so, sort of are far beyond us. So, so, so we don't need to understand them. What we need to do is recognize them, be challenged by them, be energized by them, and, and, and enter into life as best we can with as much courage as we can gather up and as much faith and as much hope. You know, St. Paul today, that opening line, it's a wonderful line, The love of Christ impels us. It pushes us forward. It energizes us. It gets a hold of us. That's what Paul was saying. We have an example of maybe Jesus' love for his disciples pushing them forward. They don't understand, but it's pushing them forward, helping them to enter into this relationship, to enter into this faith and live it out with courage and with hope. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's everlasting love, we now place our needs in his merciful hands. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all fathers, living and deceased, that God will bless and protect those who are living and hold those who have passed from this life in his eternal hands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that all who find themselves like the disciples, terrified by the storms and breaking waves of life, may they have faith enough to hear Jesus' calming voice calling for life to be quiet and still. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television and internet faith community that will be placed next to the altar. and for Deacon Aldo Preti, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of all creation, hear our prayers and respond to them out of your everlasting love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever to praise you for your mighty works through Christ. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sonor in the highest, blessed 
indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all whom you call to the ministry of your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we humbly pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are, are yours now and, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share a sign or a word of peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the, the sins, sins of the, the world. world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Know the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may our good and gracious God bless us this day and always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us continue to proclaim the gospel with our life. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. And thanks to all of you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. A special thanks to Lasalle and Mika and Rob and Jackie for leading us and praying with us today. As always, uh, if you haven't received a uh, prayer guide yet, uh, please don't hesitate to try and contact us in the best way possible for you, and we'll try to get one out to you. Again, uh, a, a special happy Father's Day to all fathers today, and please know of our prayers for you as you continue to journey through life and our prayers for all of our fathers who have found themselves in the gift of eternal life. This Thursday is the Feast of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, so something to help you journey through your week. So have a great week, everyone. And until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart.